Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And I'm really pumped to learn more about all the marketing goodness from today's guest. A lot more than marketing, though. But before we talk to our guest, I would be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co host. You know him, you love him, Six Sigma, Scott Todd. Dot uh, from scotttodd.net. <laughs> I'm already screwing up the intro, Scott. <laughs> Landmoto.com. And most importantly, you know it. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Um, today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io, the only automated financial CRM in the marketplace. Set it and forget it system. Everyone loves it. How you like that, Scott? Everyone loves it. It's a lot. That tagline is a lot better than when I, I remember back, I was posting the ads on Sunday. Man, the audience just engagement just went up. It, it goes up way high. But you know what? The audience is going to love Cloris Kylie. You know why they're going to love Cloris Kylie? Well, because she's going to teach us something that's pretty cool about like influencers, right? Yeah, but she's, if you don't know Cloris Kylie, she is a marketing MBA and she helps you build authority and attract the right clients online and offline. She shows you how to leverage connections with influencers and leaders of marketing platforms so that you can grow a magnificent business that produces positive impact and growing revenue. She is a sought after speaker, trainer, and author. Cloris has been featured on network television and on top ranked podcasts and YouTube shows, including the number one podcast for entrepreneurs, which I have still yet to be on, Entrepreneur on Fire. Cloris's articles have been published on websites with millions of followers, such as Tiny Buddha, Mind Body Green, and Addicted to Success. Cloris Kylie, how are you? I'm doing great, Mark. Very happy to be here on the show. And you have to be on EO Fire. You definitely, that's, that's your next thing to do for sure. I've been trying. I, you know, he's been on our podcast, but um, he's a, he's a, it's tough to get on that show. I have to tell you. He's booked out like a year in advance. Um, it's true. It's, it's not easy, you know, but it's, it's possible. Everything is possible. So, yeah. I mean, I'm just going to email him. Like, I just talked to Cloris and she said, book me, John, JLD. Yeah, that'll do it. That'll do it. Exactly. So, Cloris Kylie, what's the big deal about influencers? What's, what do you like about them? Well, you know, I was just telling you that, you know, my connections with influencers and uh, leaders of, of marketing platforms. And when I say that, I mean people who might not be, you know, John Lee Dumas, somebody who has like, you know, millions of listeners or followers, but even people who have a dedicated audience, an engaged audience that might be actually very small, but uh, that is your ideal audience. It's a perfect way when you connect with those people, when they support you, it's a perfect way for you to grow your business without spending a fortune on advertising, without being chained to the computer for hours, cranking your own blog posts and doing your own podcast. When you combine that strategy by having somebody else really not, not necessarily promote you, but introduce you to their audience, that's when things changed. And that's what actually changed the game for me and my business because I would be one of those who would spend the whole day just you know, writing all these posts, posting on my site pretty much every day. I would you know, create videos and, and nothing was happening and it was really frustrating. Um, and I was getting burned out, so burned out that I really thought about quitting my business. And it was only when I started to connect with, with people that had an already existing platform and they introduced me to that platform that I instantly built authority and I started to grow my list. I started to get clients. And that kind of got me over the hump. So I got that momentum I needed to then grow my business with my own content posted on my own site and so forth. I like it. I like it. You know, from a, from a land investing standpoint, Scott Todd, we could really leverage this in a way that a lot of people don't do it. I mean, we could go on podcasts about alternative investing, right? Silver, gold, um, real estate investing, right? And, um, and talk about our, our land investing strategy and our assets and, and all that. Do you like that strategy, Scott Todd? Yeah, I've actually executed on that. I've actually been on a podcast uh, that was uh, for survivors. 
survivalist, not survivors, but survivalist preppers, preppers, uh, outdoorsmen, that kind of a thing. And, uh, really cool experience talking about land. And, um, I mean, you know, it, you do get a noticeable bump in your, in your, uh, email list, your website hits. It's a, it's a great little spike there. Um, and it kind of does help you to, to launch into another, um, you know, it's like a, it's like a, uh, booster rocket on a, on a rocket, right? Like it, it helps move you up even, even faster and higher. Yeah, exactly. And that, that survivalist uh, audience, actually, I was just thinking it is a, it's a really passionate audience. And I, I realized that when I wrote this blog post, and it's actually one of the ways I connected with an influencer, uh, this man had been hosting a uh, TV show on the Weather Channel, and it was called uh, Fat Guys in the Woods. So if you are into survival stuff, and you, you, know, you probably know this show, his name is Craig Stewart. And he's a survival expert. So I would watch the show and I loved it. But it was just, it was beyond survival skills. It was about basically, you know, gaining skills out there in the woods that will help you become a better person. And one day I said, well, these are exactly the same skills you need to grow a business. So I was inspired. I wrote this long uh, blog article about it and the similarities between the two. And all I did was tweet a creek. And I said, hey, you know, I wrote this article, just one link. I thought nothing would come out of it. All of a sudden, I see all these people coming to my site. And, uh, you know, it was a creek. He, he retweeted my article. He posted it on Facebook. And since then, I have this, you know, this audience of survivalists. But it just shows you how when you really acknowledge somebody's work and you can really show with passion that you believe in their work, um, then they'll share your message with their audience. And, you know, it was incredible. That's just one small story. Yeah. So your podcast, Magnificent Time for Entrepreneurs, what is, what is the focus of that podcast? Well, the focus is to inspire entrepreneurs to get over that uh, fear, to reveal their magnificence. Um, that's, that's my motto, reveal the, your magnificence. Because I think a lot of people are kind of held back by the, their belief on, of, of what they can do, what they can accomplish, and uh, they don't take action. So I empower people to take action, and then I show them how, how they can attract those right clients. Because sometimes, yes, you, you might attract some people, but they're not the people you want to work with. And you want to work with people who, first of all, appreciate your message and your value. They are able to afford your services and your products because, you know, if they can, then what's the point, right? You, you got to have a business that is sustainable in the long term. And the last thing is that they really implement what you teach because it was, it's just somebody who's going to say, yes, I'll do it. And they never do it. And that's not an ideal client. So it's got to be all those three things together. And then I show them what it takes through stories, uh, through interviews, and then, you know, specific tactics then to help people do just that. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just looking at, at your at your site right now, and one of the, one of my favorite marketing tactics is owning that word, right? And you've actually got a you you actually recommended a book about it by Evan Carmichael, and, and in the, uh, you know, Scott and I talk about one of our favorite books is the 22 Immutable Laws of Marketing, and they talk about a lot about having that word, owning that category, right? Yeah. So, Cloris, what is your word? My word is, is magnificent, and that's why, because I want entrepreneurs to reveal their magnificence. And actually, I, I didn't think about that one word until I connected with Evan, uh, which is actually another interesting story, because I was on uh, Phoebe Chonchua's podcast, and Phoebe specializes in brand storytelling, which I think is also essential for you know to stand out and grow your business. And then at the end, Phoebe said, well, you know, uh, I think it should be on Evan Carmichael's show. Do you know about him? And I, at the time, I didn't know. I said, no, I haven't heard about him. She said, well, he has uh, almost a million subscribers on YouTube. You should check him out. Um, so I did. And then I mentioned Phoebe when I pitched my ideas. And Evan liked it. And I was on his show. So that's how I connected with him. Again, it helped my business. And I learned about the whole thing about the one word. So now I use this book, I give it to my clients as a welcome gift. So, you know, one thing leads to the next and you never know the next person you meet, how that's going to change your life, how it's going to change your business and your future, really. 
Yeah, Scott. I mean, it, it, it's so true. It's, you know, it goes back to that old adage, adage. It's not what you know, it's who you know, right? And I think a lot of people, it's hard to get out of that comfort zone to get out there, put yourself out there and start networking with people that, you know, in and of itself, like, you know, you might be intimidated. Someone's got a million YouTube followers and you've got 50, right? Or whatever. I mean, I don't know if, how many you have, of course, but like, like, you know, you don't have that many compared to that person and yet you're still going to go out and, and reach out and try to add value to that audience. Uh, Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? No, I think that uh, just getting outside your comfort zone and just knowing that, um, you know, just, just knowing the fact that, uh, you know, that it's okay if you get no, it's, it's okay if you get told no, it's, it's okay to get outside the comfort zone because that's how you're going to grow. And then, you know, don't, don't let other people's network or size or, you know, abilities intimidate you because, as long as you can add value to the conversation, I think that you'll be in a much better spot. Yeah. Yeah. So, so Cloris, if you're going to give advice right now to somebody that's, you know, starting up their, their business, um, what's the first thing you would have them do? Well, the first thing I love what Scott said about, you know, getting over that fear and getting out of your comfort zone. And it starts by acknowledging your own values. So I, what I would do is just really write down a list with all the things you have to offer, not only to influencers, but to your clients. You know, it starts with your knowledge, your expertise, your skills, your ideas. I mean, think about it. When you contribute your ideas to somebody, um, they really appreciate it. And think about somebody like James Altucher, right? He, he's like the idea master, he says. He's I'm an idea machine. So he went ahead and he wrote a series of ideas for Amazon. And you wouldn't think Amazon would even pay attention if they get a letter, these are some ideas, uh, but they did. So they had him over at the Amazon headquarters just to thank him for his ideas, to learn more about them. And that's just a small example of what can happen when you really believe in yourself, but you have to believe in yourself by seeing it somewhere, seeing a tangible example that, yes, this is the value you have to offer. So we kind of like a, uh, creating a value proposition that is really detailed. So when you're out there talking to a potential client, to a potential connection, an influencer, then you know what the, va the value is that you bring. Um, and I would say also um, just knowing your passion or your interest and really focusing on that and acknowledging people who have achieved uh, grander things in that field that you love will take you places. So for example, if you have read a book and that book has really made a mark in you and that's really helped you shape who you are, why not write a letter to the author and say thank you for that, putting a review on Amazon. If you really feel inspired, why not create a video of, your, of you talking about the book post, posting on Amazon and then that author will immediately appreciate you and and potentially become one of those people who helps you grow your business. So I would say start by listing everything you have to offer. And then once you, you feel that confidence, then go out there and start reaching out, start creating those relationships. And uh, what Scott said is true. You got to go into it with the mindset that you want to deliver value. So this is the value I have to offer. I'm going to reach out to these people. It's going to work. If I get rejected, I move on to the next person and the right person will connect with me. Cloris, what would you say is some of the bigger startup mistakes you see people going, you know, going through out of the gate? I would say the biggest mistake is to just want to want to go to the kind of like the fancy stuff right off the bat. I get a lot of people coming to me and saying, Cloris, you know, I just need help with these Facebook ads or, you know, help me grow my Facebook followers or, make my website more appealing. And yes, that's nice. It's kind of fun to, you know, grow your, your following and, you know, get the likes on social media and so forth. But really the core of your business has to be your number one priority. So a lot of these people are not even sure of who they serve. And even the language on their site and on their Facebook posts or their ads do not reflect the needs of their ideal client. So if that's happening, no matter how pretty your website looks and no matter how many followers you have on Facebook, then you will not grow your business. 
because you haven't built that foundation. So I would say building that strong foundation has to be your number one thing, your number one priority when you start a business. You know, Mark, I just read a, um, I just read a, I was reading a book and it basically, one of the quotes was from Mark Zuckerberg and he was basically saying like, you know, it's not, when you're starting out, it's not like everything that you have, it's everything that you don't have, you know, and then, then you take that back to, you know, the, the quote that says, you know, if, if your first launch is not uh, embarrassing, then, then it's too late. Right. So, you know, I see that same problem with, with, uh, you know, anybody that's investing in land is they try to pre up these offers and they try to make the, you know, they try to make their website look beautiful and they try to make all this stuff, get it all perfected before they do anything. And in fact, you know, at some point it's just like, Hey, this might be the ugliest side I've ever seen, but you know what? I'm going to go with it. I'm going to roll. I'm going to get better as time goes on because those people that are trying to make their business perfect from the get go, they'll never do anything. Yeah. I, I remember having a conversation with someone at boot camp, and they said, Hey, I, I don't want to send out offers until I have a website. <laughs> and I said, why? So I, I, you know, when they go to my website, I want to look professional. I'm like, you're not professional until you get a sale. You're not professional. Yeah. Get your sale first. Then well, you I, can have a website. I mean, I even see, you know, like I see in flight school, I see people, you know, they, they go on, they're like, Hey, what, what should my uh, company name be? Is it land this or land that or land whatever? And it's like, look, for, forget it, forget land, whatever. Okay. Like just, just mail your offers and buy a piece of property first and then figure out land or whatever you want it to be later on. But you, you're that, that stuff will not make you any money. In fact, the people that you're buying land from, they could care less if, if your name was Fred Flintstone, they wouldn't care. Yeah, as long yeah, as you're true. delivering what they want, as soon as you're meeting their needs, that's all they care, they care about really. It doesn't matter how, how good it looks or the name of it. it. It's a matter of knowing what your ideal audience wants and then giving them that, that's all it is. So Cloris, how do you actually, let's, you know, let's just get to a, a micro level of this. How do you know what your ideal customer actually wants? Well, you really have to go and ask. No, that's one thing is, is funny that I, I made that mistake. I just assume, oh, this is what people want. And I, I actually went uh, in a little cave for a few months and I developed this online course. And, you know, I, I really put all my, my heart into it. I worked long hours. I had it all ready. I actually created a whole launch process with the three videos and a webinar. And it was a lot of work. And when the day to launch the product came, I was excited. I was like, oh, how many people are going to sign up? And guess what? Only two people signed up. So I basically wasted six months of my time creating something that nobody wanted, right? So be quiet because I didn't take a step back and ask, what is it that you want? So when I say ask, you can ask in different ways. You can just get on the phone with people who have either worked with you or who would be ideal clients and then ask, you know, what, what is the number one challenge you have with respect to this specific thing that I do? So it's not about what is your number one challenge blank, but something really specific. And notice what they mention, notice what they say, write down the words they use and use those words in your marketing. It could be something like you go out to a, a forum or Facebook group. And again, you ask the same questions. You create relationships with people who are your ideal clients, do the same thing. Get into a chat with them, write down what they say, do a survey if you have a list. Same story, what is your number one challenge when it comes to doing this and that? And then you will have a series of answers. Of course, it has to be a significant number that you see patterns. And especially those people who, who really tell you a long story, who are really passionate about it, and they write a long paragraph if it's via you know, email or chat, or when they talk to you, they really talk forever. Those are the people who will buy from you if you provide an answer. So those are the comments you have to really analyze and ask yourself, how can I meet this need? What can I do to solve their problem? Yeah, a great book on this uh, that I read is Ryan Levesque, Ask. Yeah. And um, you know, he has a whole book on, on this whole strategy. Scott, have you read that book? I have, yeah. Did you, what'd you think? I thought it was a good book. I thought, uh, you know, just continuing to ask and have a methodology for, for how you would go through that process. Um, you know, I think, I think like anything, you, you have to have a way of capturing the data and actually using it because otherwise, like anything, it will become too overwhelming. But just ask. 
Yeah, and I think the inverse of that is actually your haters can give you a lot of valuable feedback. And I think, you know, once you get over the, the sting of someone, you know, giving you that hate and getting stopped out, outside of like, oh my gosh, this person actually took the time to give me this, you know, this feedback and not take it personally. Um, it's really super valuable, especially when you, when you go back to them and you thank them for it, right? They're like, whoa, they actually care what I, what I had to say. Cloris, have you experienced that? Yes, I actually, you know what I do when, when people go through a specific campaign and for some reason they don't buy my product, then at the end, I send them an email and say, I'd like to know what you didn't like about this, like what, why you didn't buy it. And uh, yes, I get some feedback that is not that nice to hear. Things like, no, this didn't meet my needs at all or it was too broad. I didn't really get what you were selling. You know, feedback like that helps me become more clear in the future. But I actually take the, I guess, get the, take the risk and just ask why they didn't like it. Because it's easy to, you know, we all want to please people. We all want to get, you know, a gold, a gold star. But, <laughs> but uh, it's only by accepting that, yes, we're not meeting everybody's needs and we can get better that, that things, you know, that you make progress and things happen. Yeah, absolutely. I, I remember when I first, you know, started, um, I would ignore the haters. Right. And, um, I think that's a big mistake. I think you've got to actually, you know, especially when it's a public hater, like go on, you know, and respond and thank them for that feedback and then use it as a, as a marketing tool to kind of turn it around as well. Um, great book by Jay bear, hug your haters. I'm, I'm, I'm tons. I'm getting tons of, of book recommendations <laughs> as podcasts, right? Which leads me to the next segment, which is tip of the week a website a resource a book something actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go right now improve their businesses improve their lives Cloris kylie what do you got well if you feel that connecting with influencers is a way for you to grow your business and i would say for most entrepreneurs it is then uh, you love then the, the guide that i have is a pdf guide called 15 ways to get noticed by influencers to grow your business. And it's basically, it's really actionable because it just gives you an idea on how to get started. If you're not sure, okay, how to start connecting with these people, then I give you a bunch of ideas. You can use one of those, become inspired. Maybe you'll get an aha moment to start those connections and just to get you going. Once you get that first step, you know how it is. Once you take the first step, then it's become, it becomes a lot easier to take the next and, and to really make things happen. So. All right. Great. Great. Click the image below to download your influencer guide. I'm on it. You like click funnels? I had a hard time with click funnels. Well, that's, it was, um, it, t- it took me two weeks to learn. It was pretty frustrating. Uh, at some point I posted a, a little thing on Facebook. Oh, can somebody help me do this? Then when I spoke with the people, I realized that only I could get things done the way I, I envisioned them. So I said, I'm just going to learn this thing. And I took the time to do it. And, and now I'm pretty happy with it. So it, I, I think everything that takes that learning curve to kind of understand that it, it has to happen. You know, you have to have a little bit of a rough time with it. And then, and then you get better. Yeah, yeah. All right, great. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, check this out. It's, uh, it's actually two, two websites I'm going to send you. One, one is uh, my.mynode.com. Okay. Oh, uh, I, I saw this. It's great. And then it's uh, learn, uh, what is it? Learn anything. Learn. Uh, yeah. Hold on. Yeah, learn, it's the same thing. Learn any, learn hyphen anything dot X, Y, Z. Okay. So basically it's taking mind maps that people are creating under certain uh, groups. So like, and it's building in content of more mind maps. So if you go to learn hyphen anything.com or learn hyphen anything dot X, Y, Z, man, that's hard to say. Then essentially what you're going to get is you're going to get, um, you're going to get basically the search in uh, search browser that says, what do you want to learn? So you can say, Hey, I want to learn like investing. Okay. So then you can type in investing and uh, a mind map will come up of investing. And then you can keep digging into it. And then this thing is going to grow as more and more people create more and more in my maps. 
Yeah, it's it's the Wikipedia of mind maps. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? It's really cool. Yeah, I, I saw that the other day. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. That's gonna be a great tip of the week for the roundtable podcast. And of course, here we took it. Took it, gone. That's <laughs> that's how you roll, Scott Todd. I, hate, I don't waste time. You know, you know, and know what you don't, which is which is great, which is great. Um, Cloris Kylie, are we good? We're good. You know, I've, I've been learning a lot. I have to take note of those uh, sites that Scott suggested because I, I had never seen them. So um, I'm learning here too. Thank you, Mark. And thank yeah, you, Scott. Yeah. yeah. That's great. That's great. Um, Scott, are we good? We're good, Mark. All right. Well, I want to thank all the listeners. And look, the only way, the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like a Cloris Kylie to come on this podcast is if you do us three tiny little favors, you got to subscribe, you got to rate and you got to review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of your review to support at the We're going to send you for free the $97 passive income launch kit. Um, again, I do want to remind everybody today's podcast is sponsored by geekpay.io, the only automated financial CRM in the country. It's awesome. Save time, save money. I love it. Um, again, check out Cloris Kylie at uh, myplatform.info. I have the link to it. Uh, how to be noticed by influencers because my, my tip of the week is learn more about Cloris Kylie at cloriskylie.com. Is that the best site? That's the best site. Yeah, you'll see everything you need. All the resources are there. Thank you. Yeah, it's great. It's great. So cloriskylie.com. Um, Scott, are we going to do this? Let's do it, Mark. Ready? Uh, one, one, two, two three. three. Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. Cloris is like, oh my gosh. <laughs> She's like, John Lee, John Lee Dumas doesn't do this stuff. <laughs> well, this is pure, uh, pure power, pure energy though. I love it. All right. Well, great. I, will, I want to thank you again for coming to the podcast. I want to thank all the listeners and we'll see everybody next time.